What's up, everybody? It's Prince Donnell, founder of the Jumping Jack Tax franchise. And we are here in a very special episode where I'm actually going to be holding the mic the entire time while I am shooting because here at Club Content, we forgot our mic stand. So this is going to be a very interesting episode today. So please disregard the mic as we're going through this information. We're going to be dropping gems regardless throughout this entire episode. And today we're going to be talking about the three mistakes that I made when coming into entrepreneurship. But I'm going to give you guys a bonus step that just arised while I'm actually shooting here today. So please stay tuned. Before that, again, as you know, I'm the founder of a tax franchise, a financial services franchise, really. So when it comes to taxes, life insurance or bookkeeping, if you need personal or business taxes done, if you need bookkeeping services, if you need life insurance, term or permanent, we have highly trained professionals that can assist you in each area. What I want you to do is text INFO to 267-765-5749. Text INFO to 267-765-5749 my team will be able to help you. With that said, uh, before I even get into it again, uh, thank you to all 70,000 subscribers that we currently have as of now. Um, I can't thank y'all enough for continuing to watch and applying this information, sharing it with all of your other friends, entrepreneur friends, people who are starting up in business, creating LLCs and S-Corps. It's the perfect channel to be able to assist you and everyone around you in your circle. So thank you so much for the support. Now, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, Top three things that I failed at um, when initially going into entrepreneurship. I'm going to start with number one, which is the bonus, is uh, I was very critical of the content and the products that I was putting out into the world. I was very critical. I was afraid that people were going to judge the things that I was doing. I, I, I wanted it to be perfect, right? So a lot of times when we go into entrepreneurship, we want things to be perfect. We want our product to be perfect. We want to know everything. We want to read the textbook back to front. You know, we want to we want to ask our family members who've never had businesses before or our friends on what they think I should do with, with, with my product or service or what I should price it at. And then they get Give you horrible information uh, that that further uh, that further ruins your confidence, and you end up pushing it further along, and you never end up hopping in the game just because of you're so critical. The reason why I say this is because, as you can see, as of today, I'm literally holding a microphone without a mic stand. Now. You may be saying to yourself, I would never do that because I would want the video to be perfect. I want my YouTube channel to be great. I don't want any mistakes or errors. Well, the errors are where the beauty comes from. I can't tell you how many videos that I have released to social media before ads, things that we've done here at Club Content, um, that we've just dropped videos that end up being mistakes that turned into millions of views. I can't tell you how many times that we've had errors in the business side of things and that error turned into a beautiful mistake that ended up allowing us to generate a lot of revenue from it. So with that said, if you never actually take the step to start and you keep delaying it, you're never going to see a result, good or bad. And by the way, whether it's a good or bad result, it's still a result that you can learn from and you can make adjustments to and do better the next time. But I had to add this as number one because this was just such a very unique situation I'm here with this mic to show you that I'm very serious about when it comes to just launching forward and doing it. We set a date or when we were going to shoot this YouTube video and nothing was going to stop us from shooting this video today. With that said, if you're watching this, um, I want you to set a date right now when it comes to launching your business or a new product or service that you plan to have. And I want you to stick to that date. And I don't care if it's not perfect on that day. You better figure out how to make adjustments to get around to it. And that was a big mistake that I made in the beginning of just being too critical and asking for too many people's opinions when they've never done the things that that I'm doing as of right now. And they never will. They're just consumers. And I need you to understand something here before I move forward. Don't share your, don't have business conversations with consumers, right? Because a consumer would never understand what you're doing on the entrepreneurial side. Now, should you have a conversation about your, like consumers reviewing your products and services, them reviewing it or telling you what they think should be the next, the next thing that they're going to buy from you? Yes. But when it comes to the business side of things, 
Don't have those type of conversations. You're only going to be let down because they can't see the bigger picture, the vision. Get around in individuals who do see that vision, right? So that was number one. My biggest mistake was being critical. And now it's it's helped me to catapult into being a, a, you know, a very good entrepreneur, very good content creator because I got rid of that and I'm just free. Now, moving on into the actual uh, mistakes that I that I really want to talk to you about as of today. Um, these are going to be very valuable and I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to write these down because this is going to completely, uh, this could really shift your mindset um, when it comes to this. I was just making filler words because I didn't know what I was going to say. I thought it was going to come to me, but it didn't. All right, moving on to the real mistakes that I wanted to talk to you about today. I want you to get a piece of paper and write these down. And I'm going to share some stories and examples as well so that you can really get an understanding and take something away from this and apply it to your life. So the very first mistake that I made in my first year of entrepreneurship was moving into a field that I didn't study. I moved into a field that I didn't study. And I'll break down what I mean by that. So Anybody who's been following my story, you know that I started out in the banking world when I was 18 years old, right? 18, 19. I went to Community College of Philadelphia. I've lived in Philly my entire life. And when I went to Community College, I went to school for accounting and finance. I wanted to be a CPA and I also wanted to work for Goldman Sachs. What's funny is that you ever had that, uh, that, that what's your dream job as your uh, reminder password? <laughs> um, and my, my, the name of that was Goldman Sachs. That was my dream to work for them as an investment banker, uh, have my CPA license. And that's what I wanted to do. But, I sh- but as I was sitting in class at community college, I realized how boring it was. And I realized I'm saying, you know what? I want more experience. I actually want to get into the real world. I want to learn how investments work. I want to learn how finances work. And I just can't do it here. And um, I made the decision to just drop out. And I went into banking. Soon after going into the banking world, um, I started to learn how credit cards work, mortgages, checking savings accounts, the interest rates, and, and how to get around certain scenarios to build my credit and all of these things because I was exposed to new information. And as I began to progress through my banking career, I ended up getting my life insurance, my life accident and health insurance license. Um, I ended up passing in about a month and I started selling life insurance through the bank at TD Bank. And from that time, I was selling a lot of policies, millions of dollars worth of policies to all of the customers that were coming inside of the bank. I was considered a financial services representative and I happened to be very good at at what I did. Um, I was very knowledgeable and I understood how life insurance worked and how it tied into the banking and financial side of things. During that, just to fast forward from there, I got an opportunity to be able to really transition into a full time of entrepreneurship. And when I decided to transition into that full time entrepreneurship, I you would have thought that I would have moved into actually just going independently when it comes to selling life insurance and offering other financial services. Wrong. The decision that I made was to go into e-commerce I wanted to move away from wearing the suit and tie every day and talking about life insurance because it was boring and talking about finances and tax. All of these things were boring. And I'm like, these are boring subjects. I want to do something fun, right? Like as entrepreneurs, we want to, we want to like, we want to like have an amazing time. We want to be creative. And unfortunately in, in that lane of finances, there's no really creativity in that. So I moved into e-commerce and I started selling inspirational jewelry. Um, a, a company that you can think about that relates to this, uh, there was a brand called Mantra Band, and uh, I ended up having inspirational bracelets that were just like theirs, but at a cheaper price point. And I'm like, you know what? I'm really going to do this, sell inspirational bracelets just like them and uh, inspirational necklaces and keys and, and everything. I had a great supplier and it was it was great. I was creative. I was taking all a bunch of photos, photo shoots and influencers, and, it, and it, it was an amazing time. But what ended up happening was since I didn't specialize in the e-commerce side of things and it was just a product for me, but I didn't really understand how e-commerce work. I didn't really understand how marketing and Facebook ads and Google ads and YouTube ads and I didn't understand the ins and outs of how to actually get customers to buy my products online and to build a brand in the e-commerce side. It was shortly lived. 
because I was in over my head. It wasn't something that I actually specialized in. It was something that I wanted to make a quick buck from. And you're probably watching this and you're whatever business that you're in this, maybe just because you want to make a quick buck, but not really because you want to understand and specialize in the area that you that, that you're currently selling products or services through. You don't want to be the best at it. You just want to make a dollar. And that was the same place. And it was short lived. It wasn't until my father in law corrected me and said, hey, sat down with him. He was like, hey, I really think you should go back into financial services. And I'm like, but it's boring. I don't want to do it. He said, but it's the best thing for you because it's what you already know It's what you were you know, pretty much born to do, you know, um, I understand it's boring, but it's going to allow you to make a living. It's going to allow you to pay bills. And more importantly, it's going to allow you to take care of my daughter. Right. And, uh, I said, you know what, I'm going to go back into the financial services field. And I remember at that time, um, that was when I decided to under, to learn taxes. I knew insurance, but I wanted to learn taxes as well because it was a need-based business. And, uh, I remember cracking open that book for the first time of understanding of learning taxes. And the first thing that was on that page was how taxes got started. And I remember they were breaking down how, you know, we originally weren't even taxed on our on all of our income. When taxes originally was created, it was to be taxed on excess income beyond a certain threshold of money that you needed for just your regular livelihood you would pay taxes on the excess income. But now, of course, the government took it overboard and now we pay taxes on every single dollar that we make if we don't understand the loopholes and how to shelter our cash. So when learning that, I started to get interested. And I remember, you know, I would I would drive home every single night, uh, me and my wife, and I remember I told her, hey, honey, for the next three months, I'm going to need you to drive home. We were about an hour away from our office to the house. And I would sit inside of the passenger seat at night and I would just be reading as we're taking that hour drive home back to the office each day. And over the course of three months, I ended up understanding and learning the tax side of things. And I just kept studying and then got my insurance license license, of course, got that back a few years later beyond that point. But I, I say all of that to say it was a big mistake because of the time that I wasted in the e-commerce side when I could have just went straight into what I already knew. And by the way, too, if you didn't know, my insurance license lapsed. After I left the bank, if you don't use your insurance license over a certain period of time, then the state will lapse your license and you can't use it anymore. And in order to get it back, you have to go through the entire exam all over again. So at this point, I already had launched Jumping Jack Tax. We've been we were rolling for about two years, two years in. And at that point, I'm like, you know what? I really want to go back into the insurance side. So I had to go through, I had to stop what I was doing with Jumping Jack Tax in the company. And I had to pause and I had to study again just to get my insurance license where now we offer taxes, life insurance, and bookkeeping. But I think about that and say to myself, it was a bonehead move because at the age of 20, 21 years old, had I just went straight into that lane, I would be so much further ahead today. The company itself would be further ahead because of the branding and the marketing that I could have done over the course of six years as opposed to two to three. So I say that to say, whatever the field of study is that you're in right now, it's sometimes best to move into that field that you know so you can dominate that lane. Or if you are in a product or service-based business right now, don't play games and just try to make a quick buck. If you're going to do it, study it and understand it to the point where you are the best at what you do, where you can explain it to a third grader, right? Because that's what's going to separate you from the rest of the crowd that simply wants to do it to make a quick dollar and they're going to be gone a year from now. So that was number one, is that um, my field of study, I didn't specialize in it. Number two is that I didn't understand my profit margins, right? That's the, that's the second mistake. I think a lot of times we move into the, the lane of entrepreneurship and like, like for example, I remember when, when, when in the e-commerce side of things, in the first business, it was like, hey, you know, I got this, I get these braces for $5, but I'm, I'm just going to sell them for 10. And remember, I was looking at another competitor um, that was selling inspirational jewelry and I'm like, okay, if they sell it for 25, I want to cut the market and sell it for 10. So I'm getting it for five. If I sell it for 10, I make $5. I make double my money. That makes sense, right? right? You may double your money by getting it for five and selling it for 10. Wrong. I didn't understand my profits and truly realizing the ins and outs of what that profit was going to pay. So let's just do a real life example here. If I get a product for five bucks 
and I end up selling it for 10 and I got a $5 profit, yeah, you might think to yourself, that's what I keep in my pocket, but it's not. I want you to factor in a few different things here that I wasn't thinking about when I made that mistake. Let's factor in the, 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 the fact of what if emergencies happen? Is your $5 profit going to be able to cover emergencies? Think about this. How much? Let's, let's, let's circle back for a second. And I'm actually going to pull my phone in. If I'm making $5 in profit, right? And let's just consider the fact that I want to go full time in this in the, in the lane of entrepreneurship. Well, if I was making, let's say, $50,000 at the bank, then how many products do I actually have to sell in order for me to actually generate $50,000 a year? That's not even talking about taxes. I would have had to sell 10,000 bracelets just to even break even on my salary at the bank. 10,000 units without knowing what I'm doing. But if since I didn't understand my profits, I just threw a magical number out there of 10 bucks and I thought $5 was cool. So number one, I would have never been able to transition into full time because I wasn't going to be able to sell 10,000 10, plus units. I didn't have the market for it. Secondly, what about the fact that now you're going to, if, if I'm selling 10,000 units, I'm going to need help. Well, that $5 profit, am I going to be able to cover my expenses to be able to, to hire? Am I going to be able to cover my expenses to be able to have an office for rent? Am I going to be able to cover my expenses? Like these are things you got to think about. And I didn't think about that in the beginning. I just threw a number out there. I actually have a video on YouTube today that talks about how to price your product or service. And I really suggest you watch this because I, it's, I, I made the video from the mistakes that I made and not understanding that like what actually goes into profit from taxes to, like I said, the expenses to salary, to innovation, to marketing, right? You want to price it the right way from the very beginning and don't look at competitors and what they're, what they're charging because that has nothing to do with what you have responsibilities of doing and where you see your future at with this product or service that you're selling. I made that mistake com comparing myself to another company and not really thinking about that. So that's number two. Please understand that piece um, and watch that video I have on YouTube. It's going to literally give you so much clarity on how to break down your profit margins on a product or service. And then number, and, and, and by the way, if you have a service-based business, same exact thing too. It's not just your time. It's also the expenses when it comes to your service and, and you have to break all of these things down. So watch that video. And number three is, it wasn't really necessarily a mistake. It was really more so, uh, advice that I took that I'm glad I did because it assisted me in my future was number three is the legal paperwork, right? The legal paperwork. So I remember, of course, when, when I first went into entrepreneurship, I didn't think that I didn't really take the legal paperwork side of things seriously. I don't think many of us do. I think that since we you know, in the beginning, can't afford to hire an attorney or have a CPA on staff or an accountant or a bookkeeper. We just say to ourselves, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'll get I'll get to it when I get to it. And that was the person that I was. I'll get to it when I get there. And a lot of times, by the time it gets there, you're already in trouble. Right. And that was a big part of I'm, I'm glad that when I talked to my father in law in the very beginning, he educated me on the fact that, yo, you want to make sure you take the legal paperwork serious. He was the person that was like, hey, I'm not playing around. He didn't he doesn't play around with two things. He doesn't play around with legal paperwork and insurance. And I remember he stressed that enough. Anytime you go into business or any products that you get, any equipment that you get, make sure you have insurance. And I'm like, do you really got to pay insurance for lights? He's like, yo, these lights could break. You have insurance to make sure the insurance company can cover it. It's only 10 bucks. I would be like, nah, I'm not really doing it. But I didn't realize because I've had things that broke before and I would I'll be able to get it back because I had insurance. Same thing from a legal perspective. Like, don't play around like with, 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 your, with your legal paperwork, you know? If you have a product-based business, right now, you need to get your terms and conditions taken care of. You need to get your, what is your refund policy, right? What, like you need to get your ins and outs because I'll tell you what, the goal of us is in the same thing with service-based business. What are your terms of service? What if somebody cancels before they're done paying you what's, what's remaining? What's, what's the consequence to that? What's owed to you? What's your refund policy? Like these things matter because I'll tell you what, in the lane of business, our goal is to turn strangers into customers. But when a customer is no longer a customer, they now become a stranger. 
And when they become a customer to a stranger, everything that you've done for them no longer matters. All the work that you did, they forgot about that. Right. Um, all, all the work you did, they forgot about. Right. Um, when it comes down to disputes and issues, they're going to want things that are completely out of this world that you don't agree to. But and same thing when it comes to business partners as well. Right. Y'all originally started everything out and it was great. It was fun. Y'all all had the same vision. But what happens two, three years from now when somebody doesn't do their part? If your legal paperwork is not in order, word of mouth is not going to hold up in court. Word of mouth is not going to hold up when a customer does a chargeback with their bank and now they're taking the money back out of your account that you needed to pay your bills. And I've seen this happen many a times over just with myself, right? And, and I, I stress to you, please do, not, uh, please do not play games with your legal paperwork. Make sure that it's done. It's going to be the best investment that you make. But I will talk to you about a, a, a mistake to wrap this from here is that one of the mistakes I did make when I was originally just walking into entrepreneurship and I didn't understand taxes at the time was that I didn't have it. I didn't have a tax professional or accountant or CPA who knew what they were doing. So much so that when I originally structured the the, the e commerce store, when I structured the company, they told me to structure the company as a C corp. And for those of you who don't know what a C corp is, I'll just summarize it for you. Ninety nine percent of you don't need to be in a C corp. So the person who told me to do this, I, I wish I knew their name to tell you to move, stay away from them. But a C corp basically a lot made me. I had to pay taxes twice. I was being double taxed because I was inside of a C-Corp. I was being taxed on the, uh, on, on the wage level and I was also being taxed on a corporate level, which now more of my money is going to the IRS when more of it should be inside of the company to be able to allow it to grow. You want to pay as less taxes as possible to the IRS. So I was given wrong information because of the fact that I was being cheap and trying to have and get advice from from somebody when I should have done it the right way. Had I done it the right way now, it took a while, but now I, I was able to reclassify. Now that I understand tax law and understand business taxes, now I understand the value of S-Corps, right? Or just simply operating as, as an LLC minus S-Corp, depending upon your scenario. I have a video talking to you about when to move from LLC to S-Corp. I have a video. You can watch it. But I'm glad now that like, yo, I, I not only do I understand taxes, but I also still hire a CPA to get outside opinion, somebody who's a professional that gives a, a better understanding of how things work. So these matter because you don't want to be tied up in litigation. You don't want to have your money lost from customers who ask asking for refunds and you got to provide it back because your legal paperwork is not in order. And I also don't want to pay more taxes to the IRS. And these are mistakes that, that I've made just because I was cheap on the professional side. So why I'm telling you, if you need your taxes done, personal or business or et cetera, you can come to Jumping Jack Tax. We will help you, but don't try to, don't try to cross it. It's always going to cost you in the end. So to wrap this up from here um, in this video is number one, the bonus that I gave you was don't be critical about your product or service so much so that you never do it, right? I did that in the beginning, but as you can see now, I'm holding a microphone and I'm still shooting this video even without a, a mic stand because the goal is to get it done, set a date and get it done. Number two, I didn't go into business in the field that I studied, right? So if you're going to go into business, study the field that you're going into and do it full throttle or you're going to be basic and you're never going to get to a, high, a higher level if you're just trying to bang a buck or in the field that you already are comfortable in, go into business and doing that because it's going to make it a smoother transition for you. Next is to make sure that you understand your profits. Don't make the mistake of going into business and just throwing a number out there, a retail number that you plan to sell your product or service for, but you haven't accounted for all of the expenses that are going to go into that profit. You haven't accounted for if you can scale to do this full-time, expenses, emergencies. Don't look at you. You can, you can monitor your professionals and their prices, but still remember, your responsibilities are different. Your vision is different than somebody else's. You don't know their goal. Base your product and services on your goal alone, not on other people's. And lastly, your legal paperwork and the professionals that you have. Do not half-ass that. 
because if you half-ass it today, it's going to catch you in the future. Make sure that your legal paperwork is right. Make sure that you're hiring somebody to do it for you, right? It's the best investment you're going to make. Make sure you have high-level financial professionals as well, so you're paying the least amount of money as taxes, right? And these are the mistakes that I made that I want to bring on to you when it comes to building the foundational piece for your business that's going to help you catapult into the future and, and help you to really scale. So I hope this information is of value to you and that you wrote this down that you apply this again please make sure that you watch previous videos i have on llc versus s corp i have a video on that how to price your products or services got a video on that when to pay yourself out of your llc we have a video on that um five five things to do before starting your llc five things to do before hiring your first employee i got a bunch of videos on youtube please go back to watch them because this is like literally a free course that you can take on starting up your business so please take a look at those and with that said um, I'm Prince Donnell, founder of the Jumping Jack Tax franchise. You need personal business taxes done, bookkeeping, or life insurance? Text INFO to 267-765-5749. I look forward to providing you with much more value in the future. Please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Peace.